A very good day to you people. My name is Mohit and guys today I'm going to show you how to get the typewriter effect in Flash Professional CS 5.5 using ActionScript 3. So guys before I actually start explaining things uh, let me show you a published preview by hitting Control Enter on my keyboard. So here goes Control Enter. Let me put it to full screen. <coughs> Guys, you could not see uh, some part of it that was simply because the text field was not big enough to accommodate the text uh, what I can do is I can actually decrease the font size let's say from a 22 to a 20 and I should be fine this time let me go again in fact guys I can even change the frame rate and make the typewriter go at double the speed the frame rate right now is 12 let me put it to 24 let me hit control and on the keyboard and let's show it to you I've dropped the, the font size from a 22 to a 20 and there should be nothing being truncated now there you go right okay so guys basically using uh, the frame rate either increasing or dropping it I can actually uh, increase the rate at which the typing takes place and we should uh, we shall understand how this actually happens by actually going inside the actions panel and I shall be uh, discussing the action script with you but that's that's in the latter half in the former half the first half I'll be explaining how things actually work on the stage now guys <coughs> notice out here on the timeline tab that I've used three layers okay the top layer is uh, where the action script is and usually it is the top layer okay then we have this text field out here okay we have this text field out here and I've called it my text it's classic and dynamic guys this is important the text field is supposed to host the font century gothic which has been set to bold the font size is 12 and guys it's very very important that I embed the font I clicked out here and I had uh, said that I want all the character ranges to be embedded and uh, here I changed the name from a font one to a century this is exactly what you should do as well guys you should be embedding the font just in case <coughs> sorry just in case uh, if you were running this uh, Swift on a different computer and that PC did not have the font century gothic you'll not be able to see it so guys it's extremely important that you embed the font okay right and guys have a look out here I've set the anti-alias to a readability that's fine also guys <coughs> for the text field I initially set the size to 550 by 400 but then I dropped the size like so uh, to apply the bottom and the top margins okay and as far as the left and the right margins for this text field is concerned guys I went out out here where you can actually see set the margins the left margin I set to 10 pixels the right margin for the text field which I've called my text I've set it to uh, 10 pixels as well and out here guys notice that the format says that it's aligned to the left and the behavior is multi-line just in case yours is set to a single line please change it to a multi-line so for the text field which is called my text alright set to classic dynamic uh, the font which has been embedded is Century Gothic. It's bold. It's uh, point size is 20. Has been set to anti-alias for readability. Guys, notice out here that the font Century Gothic has been embedded. <coughs> Sorry. The font color. In fact, uh, let me go with black. <coughs> uh, is black size 20, and guys, it is not selectable. Okay, not selectable right and then um, it's it's aligned to the left left and right margins have been set to 10 each and the top and the bottom margins are manually set by dropping uh, the text frames 
okay like so right and uh, that's that's all that you have on the stage uh, barring this texture we did not talk about this texture now this texture guys I made it in uh, Adobe Fireworks CS 5.5 it was just a two minute thing it was pretty easy I love the product uh, I just created in it in two minutes uh, pretty pretty easy all right so we have our textures there then we have the text field there and we have the action strip tree there cool that's all that is uh, there on the stage and let's see what's there in the library now guys I needed uh, the, the computer keyboard uh, the keystroke sound for which I actually uh, have used a royalty free copyright free sound I <coughs> downloaded it from the internet and uh, let me play it for you first it's a long sound guys it's 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 uh, it's roughly a uh, a minute or a couple of minutes <coughs> right so it's a sound which is uh, a few minutes let me stop it right there guys since I had embedded the font you can see the embedded font out here and this of course is the uh, PNG texture that I'd uh, created in uh, Adobe Fireworks CS5 cool now guys since we have understood exactly what is there in the library what is there on the stage uh, let's dive inside the actions panel and understand how this was actually made possible so let me open up the actions panel for you guys there you go uh, let me expand the area right okay <coughs> now guys uh, I've used a variable called my sound and uh, I made it equal to new KB now what exactly is KB KB stands for keyboard out here notice out here uh, uh, in the library guys I have the computer keyboard sound uh, s you know has an AS linkage set to KB now how did this uh, AS linkage happen it is extremely easy guys now do, the first thing you need to do is to get a computer keyboard sound and uh, that's pretty simple just uh, for example let's say if the sound was lying anywhere on your hard disk all you need to do is you need to say file you need to say import and then you need to say import to the library okay so then after you import the sound to the, sound to the library this sound will come and sit out here okay then guys what I did was I right clicked out here I went to properties and then I went to the action script tab okay then I checked this box which says export for action script I gave it a class name I called it KB you you can name it whatever you want guys you can name it whatever you want but this should match this name out here okay that's extremely important and then I said okay you get a warning which you should ignore say okay once again and this is how the AS linkage happens unless and until you do the AS linkage in the library guys for the sound you'll not be able to use that sound inside the actions panel cool <coughs> so in line number one uh, I, I set a variable or I declared a variable my sound I, I set it equal to the new KB which is the new sound so I'm basically saving the sound inside this variable that's how you do it guys and then using the play method guys I made it play okay and line number three guys you can notice that I've actually used uh, a variable I declared a variable uh, my string which is of the type string and then I actually have fed a long string now guys this string is something that you can change you can change according to your taste your preference whatever you like according to the scenario All right but guys just notice out here I've used uh, a couple of um, forward slash n forward slash n now forward slash n stands for a line break wherever flash encounters forward slash n it'll insert a line break and uh, a double forward slash n stands for a double line break cool okay so we have a double line breakout here and we have a double uh, line breakout here so flash will automatically understand that you actually want to uh, hit enter or insert a, a carriage return as they call it so that's a you know a, a double line break <coughs> cool now guys in line number four I have declared a, a, a variable called my array and arrays uh, this isn't a very basic tutorial guys 
it would be understood only by people who under you who have worked with arrays who understand how arrays function how arrays work now arrays are nothing but um, you know big variables that can hold more than one value so what i've done is i've used the my string dot split method now what the split method does is it will break the string which is my string into small pieces and each piece is decided by whatever is the criteria set out here since the criteria set out here is an empty string it is nothing it will split the whole string into each individual character so it will separate the m then the y then the space then the n then the you know then the letter a then the letter m then the letter e so basically depending on what criteria you set it and, and since it was set to no criteria basically it's it's been set to an empty string it'll keep on breaking each and every character okay guys it separates each letter or each character in fact let me trace the array for you you'll get a much better idea if i say trace and then i say my array and uh, let me you know test the movie once again hitting control enter <coughs> and guys notice out here in the output panel the array consists of each single individual characters or letters okay so basically since the criteria was set to an empty string it has broken uh, the complete string into each individual uh, character but let's say if I were to change the criteria to let's say mm, let's say a comma let's see what would happen all right I'm setting the delimiter uh, to a comma and if I test now let's see what would happen right <laughs> uh, uh, notice how out here uh, how the array has been uh, broken okay it, it's it looks a lot different guys now <coughs> doesn't it I'm sure it does all right and uh, let me go back and let's say if the delimiter wa wasn't a comma let's say what if it were um, uh, let's say mm, let's say the period let's say what would ha let's see what would happen control enter to test right <coughs> let's let's try something else let's try um, let's try the dash sign let's see what would happen okay right so so basically uh, depending on uh, how you actually want the uh, string to be broken you can actually set a delimiter you, you can uh, you know specify the criteria out here and uh, then a uh, array will be formed depending on the criteria that you had specified let me just uh, do away with the trace statement now I don't want it anymore alright and then guys out here uh, I've created an, an enter frame event okay enter frame events guys fire off at FPS which is right now set to 24 if you want the typewriter effect to be really breezy then you can uh, set it to a higher value if you want it to really slow down a lot you can set it to a value much slower let's say a six and let's see what would happen let me hit control and on the keyboard to test there you go it's it's, it's a lot slower than it used to be earlier right and uh, <coughs> if i were to set it to a, a higher value let's say 48 which is the double of the default which is 24 let's see what would happen it goes pretty fast guys so that's that's entirely up to you how you actually want it and guys let's see uh, what is happening out here I've used an enter frame event and uh, the I've used a function out here frame handler so every time a new frame is entered uh, or basically uh, the function is frame handler is getting fired off at FPS FPS is 24 or 48 or whatever okay at FPS uh, frame handler is getting fired off and let's see what the function frame handler does what it actually does is it first checks if the length of the array is greater than 0 so basically uh, as long as the array is preserved now what is actually eating up the array why am I saying as long as it is preserved as long as the array is present as long as the array has an existence 
please append the my, my text my text is actually the text field guys if you remember let me show it to you in the properties the text field out here so basically it's appending using the append text property guys using the append text property i'm appending the text field by my array dot shift <coughs> i don't know how many of you guys actually understand what a shift and unshift do what a push and pop do now shift will extract one character from the beginning of the array and it will append the text field okay using the dot append method of the dot append property all right so using the uh, dot append text method we are appending the my text field which is that big text field uh, placed on this you know on the stage so it's ex extracting uh, one character every time and it goes on extracting unless and until it actually there are, there are no characters left and once uh, it makes sure that there are no characters left it will execute this else statement and uh, according to this else statement guys it's always a great habit it's always a very good habit uh, and good developers always do this they remove the eventlessness it actually adds to a smoother animation that's the right way to do it that's the way you should actually do it I'm removing the animation I'm removing the event listener guys the enter frame event I'm actually removing it once the array is void once the array has been eaten up using the shift method guys and once that happens since the array is all over it's void it's empty I can actually use the sound mixer class now sound mixer class has global control over all sounds and using the dot stop all method I'm making sure that the typewriter sound which is playing or there could be any other sound that was playing so we are using the sound mixer class guys now sound mixer class actually has the global control over all sounds that are playing I'm saying stop all so no matter which sound is playing it will stop all the sounds since we just have one sound playing which is these you know the 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 KB sound it stops that sound and there you go the result is before you let me hit control enter once again to show it to you there you go it actually went pretty fast that is because the frames per second was set to uh, a 48 you can probably keep it at 30 something like 30 would be fine let's go again all right guys so <coughs> I hope you like this tutorial guys I, I hope you found it informative you would use it and uh, I hope I'll see you very soon with yet another flash and access to 3 tutorial you have a good day guys bye bye peace